Вітаємо вас на українській телемережі «Контакт». Мене звати Юстина Лавкович і рада, що проведу з вами наступну годину. Сьогоднішню передачу представляємо пам'яті нашого друга і довголітнього ведучого сторінки «Сенчер Стейдж» Майкл Кюрі, який відійшов у вічність 31 березня цього року. Михайло працював на «Контакті» від 1 жовтня 1994 року, майже 17 років. І весь той час Магайло представляв на програмі найкращі спектаклі, моменти і персонажі українського культурного життя в Канаді і Україні. Тому сьогодні наш привілей разом із ближчими приятелями і співробітниками Магайла представити вам програму «В честь і пам'ять нашого друга». Дальше в останньому перед літньою перервою у сегменті «Очима культури» доктор Марко Роберт Стех розповість про дивовивну постать і життєву долю української письменниці Наталини Королевої. А після реклам – новини з України. Зараз розкажемо про життєвий шлях нашого друга і довголітнього ведучого сторінки «Сенчер Стейдж» Майкл Кюрі, який відійшов у вічність 31 жовтня цього року. «Сенчер Стейдж» є зроблено вам від Канадського національного українського фестивалу. Жалай 29, 30 і 31 у Дофін, Манитоба. Michael Curry will always be remembered for that great smile of his, his kindness, musicality, and everything he has done for the Ukrainian community. He was most recognizable as the host of Center Stage, a segment about the arts that he developed after joining Contact in 1994. Welcome to Center Stage, I'm Mikhailo Curry. Join me today for my exclusive interview part two with Pavlo Zibrov from Kiev. Welcome to Springfest 95, a celebration of fun, food, entertainment, and above all, our Ukrainian heritage. Hi, welcome to Center Stage. I'm Mikhailo Curry. The world of Ukrainian cinema is on the move. But let's go back further in time and learn a little bit more about Michael James Curry, who he was. Michael was born on February 1st, 1954, the second child of Robert and Martha Curry. He started taking piano at the age of seven, but it may surprise you that he actually hated practicing at first. It was his mom who encouraged him to just keep going. And it's a good thing she did because it turns out he had a natural musical ability. It became clear just how musically talented he was when he was awarded the gold medal for grade 10 piano from the Royal Conservatory of Music, ranked first among all those competing. And this was when he was still a teenager. Well, in his early 20s, Michael got the opportunity to study music in Ukraine, including bass at the Music Conservatory in Kyiv. When he arrived in Ukraine, he didn't know much of the language, but he learned quickly and really fell in love with the culture. He stayed in Ukraine for three years, and while he was there, he made strong friendships. One of his new friends was Ukraine's premier opera star, Zenya Miroshnichenko. When Zenya passed away in 2009, Michael spent hours and days putting together a tribute to her in a segment of center stage. I first met her some 35 years ago, when I was just 20 years of age. And for the last 35 years, I've been very proud to call her a close personal friend and I was actually a member of her extended family. He fell so much in love with Ukraine that he returned in the 90s every year. He reconnected with old friends from his student years and formed a relationship with the dance troupe Volin. When he came back to Canada, Michael worked as a projectionist in a few movie houses, keeping with his love of the arts. In 1986, he joined the Toronto District School Board as a music instructor. He started sharing his talent and his love of music, and it was a job he held until his last days. Also in the late 80s, Michael formed a musical group called Troyanda, along with Oresia Taluk and Laura Prokopovich. Together they made several recordings and traveled across Canada and Europe. Now I got a chance recently to speak with Bill Hevreschuk, who produced Troyanda's first album, about that time in Michael's life. I uh, met Michael in the spring of uh, 1987 when Troyanda had just started, and um, I had the pleasure of working with them, rehearsing them and producing their first album. And after that, uh, that album did really well. They ended up going on tour of Eastern Canada. 
after that I had my own band for a little while and Michael was the, the keyboard player in that band and we happened to work together for that uh, finale show for the Volin group from Ukraine when they were here in 2005 and you know we were always in touch we shared common interests in Ukrainian art and culture. Producing Michael was actually it was very easy because it's very professional very prepared um, what we did was we used to rehearse at uh, one of the singers houses so when we arrived in the studio we were able to do the whole album in four hours but he was great to work with he was always prepared he was always on time that first uh, Trianda album was uh, a collection of some very well-known Ukrainian folk songs and we tried to do a little twist on the arrangements um, updating it and, and making it work for two voices and piano and he was very open-minded and always willing to try something new when you listen to him play he could really express the feeling in the music, the highs and the lows, and it was it was emotional for lack of a better word. I'll miss all of his phone calls because sometimes he used to call even three times in one night. <laughs> he would call me when he would get frustrated with things, but uh, you know what? We used to call each other. We used to talk just about just about everything. You know, not just some people call each other twice a year or whatever, but we used to just pick up the phone and and just talk for a little while. So you know what? I'm going to miss those phone calls. Michael's music made a big impression on a long list of people, and I spoke to another old friend of his on that topic, Catherine Samet, who met Michael more than 20 years ago when Trianda played at the Spirit of Ukraine Gala in Hamilton, while Catherine also accompanied a cellist. I've always admired his playing. He, he was a solid player, um, a, a passionate player, and uh, a wonderful, wonderful teacher. Uh, who inspired many, many s students, and that was very evident at uh, his memorial service. He was an inspiration, and his love of music uh, and his passion was passed on to young students that someday they will pass that on to perhaps their students. But he, he was uh, larger than life, exuberant, creative, inspirational and uh, as a young student I could see that they would be totally uh, enamored with with him and uh, be totally engaged in what he was teaching them and by all means I have uh, heard that his student concerts were absolutely wonderful. What will you remember most about Michael? Well to me Michael was a very spiritual um, exuberant, kind, supportive friend. And um, I feel privileged that in the last decade he did become a very close personal and family friend and we miss him dearly and um, uh, he, he is singing and performing with the angels uh, right now but um, we all miss him. Michael will also be remembered for all that he did for the Ukrainian community. Through his segment Center Stage, he helped a long list of amateur musicians get their name out, tell their stories, and share their music. He also volunteered a lot of his time to help various organizations across Toronto. Recently, Michael felt strongly about helping the St. Volodymyr Cultural Center raise the money needed to build a new chapel, a project that is now almost complete. At a big fundraiser last year, the Blossom Ball, Michael sat down at the piano in front of a room full of the project's donors to share his talent. The Blossom Ball was held again this year, an event Michael was really looking forward to. I visited to speak with one of the organizers and an old friend about his contribution. I have known Michael Curry for absolute years. He's been an incredible presence in our Ukrainian community, musically as well as for the show Contact. Uh, my sister and Michael played together years ago and Michael is a very, was a very special individual who supported every event that we've had here at the Cultural Center and at the church, St. Volodymyr Cathedral. Michael is a rare talent of his gift to music, his gift to the community and his gift to another human being. He had a heart and he volunteered his time towards the Blossom Ball for our fundraising efforts, building the chapel at Sotol Voladamara. He played dinner music and he had his fabulous black sequin Liberace jacket, a real character. 
he will be so missed. Michael's love of music never died. He carried that love with him to every project he worked on, including the segment he created. And the segment Contact will now retire in his name, center stage. Center Stage is brought to you by Canada's National Ukrainian Festival, July 29th, 30th and 31st in Dauphin, Manitoba. Вітаємо вас на українській телемережі Контакт. Мене звати Юстина Левкович і я рада, що проведу з вами наступну годину. Сьогоднішню передачу представляємо пам'яті нашого друга і довголітнього ведучого сторінки Center Stage Майкл Кюрі, який відійшов у вічність 31 березня цього року. Михайло працював на контакті від 1 жовтня 1994 року майже 17 років. І весь той час Михайло представляв на програмі найкращі спектаклі, моменти і персонажі українського культурного життя в Канаді і Україні. Тому сьогодні наш привілей разом із ближчими приятелями. і співробітниками Магайла представити вам програму «В честь і пам'ять нашого друга». Далі в останньому перед літньою перервою у сегменті «Очима культури» доктор Марко Робертс Тех розповість про дивовивну постать і життєву долю української письменниці Наталя Магайла.